obviously we're all very excited for the weekend, um, both for the on the field and the off the field. Uh, it's going to be a great uh, series between two great teams uh, that are positioning themselves in, in a really good spot. And off the field, it's going to be great to have Founders Park wide open and, and see how many people come out here to, to celebrate um, just being getting closer to normal. Um, baseball and Founders Park, important baseball. Um, everybody is allowed to come in full capacity. So just real excited to see what this thing looks like. Let's we'll start with Dave. Hey, Mark, thanks for doing this. Uh, a couple for you. One, is your pitching rotation the same? Yes, yes. And two, was there any consideration just looking ahead to the SEC next week of maybe switching that around for whatever reason? Like if you want to go carry out front first, was there any talk about that for you? No, no, zero. Uh, obviously, everybody's on one less day rest uh, as it is. And so adding even, even less rest to those guys, it would not make sense. We'll worry about the SEC tournament when we see how this, this weekend goes. Colin? Yeah, Mark, I, before the game three gets Mississippi State, you said you weren't shy about telling your team how important that game was. Do you go into this weekend talking about how important this series is for your guys in terms of your hosting resume? Well, for the last couple of weeks, I've just been telling every every the guys every game's a big game now. And if you want to be uh, one of the teams at the end, you have to approach it that way. You have to think that this is a big game that we need to sell out to win. Um, obviously, within reason, uh, you don't put guys in harm's way to win games, but in terms of just making sure you're prepared mentally, physically, you're doing everything you need to win. Every game we play is big at this point. And, and that's what you want. You want to be playing in big games and you want it to serve as motivation. Uh, it's not any pressure. It's not anything other than, man, we're so lucky we get to play in big games in the best conference in America, uh, representing South Carolina. And let's go put our best foot forward. How do you feel like the guys have really responded to that over the last maybe two or three weeks? Very well. Very well. I think the results speak for themselves. Um, this is a team that I've been, I'm fortunate that when I challenge them, they generally rise to the occasion. Um, and that's something as a coach, you need to learn your team as, as the season goes on. Some teams you have to be a little more hands off. Some teams you've got to be over the top with discipline. Some teams you have to have a balance. Uh, and so I think the more we've learned about this team, this is a team because it has some big time competitors because some of our leaders are older guys that we've been able to challenge uh, and they generally respond in a very good way. John. Staying on the hosting topic, do you, uh, do you monitor what the other 20 teams are doing? Uh, do, you, do you pull up their schedules and look at how their RPI moves around a little bit? You know, I'd say, again, most coaches will tell you, no, we're just worrying about ourselves. I'll give you the honest answer. 98% of our time is spent on our team and preparing for this series. But yeah, when you're at home on the couch and last night watched in, you know, Georgia versus Georgia Tech and Ole Miss versus UT Martin, um, you do scroll around and see who else these these other of the 20 teams, who are they playing? What's their RPI? Um, it's just I think it's human nature to want to know um, not only your situation, but how how are the other people that might affect your situation? How are they set up? What are they doing? What What's their record? So, yeah, I mean, you uh, it's 24 seven at this point in terms of, of what we're doing uh, to try to try to maximize this thing. So knowing what, what everybody else is in store for that's, that's important too. Okay. Dave. Dave, Mark, how's Brennan Malone for this weekend? Uh, it, it's probably a long shot that he'll, that he'll play this weekend. So Heinrich will slide right into third base like he did last night. And then um, hopefully with Brennan, it goes from week to week to day to day at some point soon. Brad. Hey, Coach, uh, with Wes hitting uh, number 20 last night, since they deadened the bats, you know, 10 years ago or a decade ago, how significant is, is that kind of milestone in, in today's game? Yeah, I think that's a big number. Um, 20, whether you're in the big leagues and you play 162 games, 20 is still a pretty nice number for guys to get to. So to think that in, in a, a, what amounts to about a 50 game schedule, we've actually played 50 games now and, and he's hit 20 homers. I mean, that's, you put that over the course of a major league season, that's 60 plus homers, which would put him in Roger Maris category. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's very impressive, very impressive. He's worked hard for it. He's earned the success uh, and, and he's deserving of everything he's getting right now. So 
real happy for the kid um, and happy for us because we're, we're the benefactors of when he does hit that home, those homers. Mitch Brown. Hey, Coach, obviously it's the last regular season series for you guys. Um, and things are, you know, kind of as you saw the announcement with Founders Park, and you guys going to have full capacity this weekend. Just thinking back to last year or even the beginning of the season with so much uncertainty still. And I'm wondering for you and the team, has it felt like it's kind of flew by this season? And obviously things have changed. Um, how does it feel to just see things, you know, on the mend as you guys enter the tail end? Yeah, it's been a combination of the two. At times it felt like, everything was going so slow because we had so many restrictions. We had so many protocols we had to keep up with. And again, we're, we're separating your locker rooms and we're testing twice a week. A lot of times at 7 a.m. in the morning and you had road trips and we had some really pretty tough, long road trips. And, and so at times it felt like, man, it, it's going slow because of all the, all these things that are not normal. But then other times it felt like it was flying by. And to think that we here we are in the last weekend of the regular season, um, hard to believe. You know, so to answer your question, if I had to pick one or the other, I would say in the big picture, I think it's flown by. I can't believe it. It feels like we were just trying to figure out the protocols for fall ball. And can we have a team meeting even? Uh, I, I remember sitting talking about we can't even have a team meeting in our locker room. We have to spread them out. We have to do Zoom calls. And now here we are speed ahead to may of 2021 and we're having team meetings we're playing baseball we're in the last weekend of the season we're talking about rpis talking about hosting we've got an open stadium we've come a long way you know both both as a society we've come a long way and within our program we've come a long way in the last i'd say nine to ten months so all good at this point moving forward michael Mark, I know, you know, you've talked before the season just how difficult the schedule was and obviously playing in the SEC, it's always going to be difficult and a rough patch was probably bound to come eventually. But, you know, now that you guys have kind of seemingly rebounded from, you know, those couple of rough series that you had, does that, how does it impact, I guess, the psyche of the team to be able to kind of put that behind you to respond to that challenge and then to, you know, do what they've done. I know there's more baseball to play, but just how does that sort of help these guys as they, they go into the postseason? You know, the, the, the old cliche is if it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger. And this schedule could have killed a lot of people. There's no question about it. And at times we took some wounds on, but we didn't die and we kept fighting back. And we've put ourselves in a position now to be, you know, basically one of the top 10 RPI teams in the country. And we're, we've put ourselves in a position through enduring that schedule um, to host. And we've learned a lot about our team. There's no question about it. We've learned what we can do. We've learned where our weaknesses are. We've made adjustments along the way. And so having what I, I, I don't care what the strike the schedule meter says, nobody has played more high-end games than we have. When you look at not just the top 50 in the country, but we're talking top five, top eight. Nobody has played a harder schedule than we have. So. What I hope happens when all is said and done is, is we just learned more lessons. We, we were hardened more than anybody else. And that when we get to the NCAA tournament, we'll, we'll get the dividends of all those, those tests and all those, uh, all those burdens we had to carry along the way. Um, and, and we'll get a payoff here at the end. That, that's what you hope happens. Colin? Mark, just what have you seen from Tennessee and the scouting you've been able to do? And what are you expecting from a team that obviously could come in here and, and with a shot at winning the East? It's a very good team, obviously. Um, they play with a chip on their shoulder. Um, they're talented offensively, defensively. Um, they pitch very well. Um, it's, a good, it's a good team. There's no question about it. And I, I think the teams are uh, very evenly matched. Um, if you look at our common opponents, um, we have the same record against common opponents. So I think it's going to be a great series. We have a lot of respect for them and, and how, how they play the game. And, you know, their team right, right now ranked in, you know, very high and, and are an Omaha contender. Uh, so I just think it's going to be great baseball. John? Uh, se senior day coming up. Um, George Khalil, uh, it feels like he's been around for a long time now. Uh, what, what do you kind of take forward uh, in your memory about him? What kind of stands out to you when, when you think about George, whether it's on the field or off the field, just interactions with him? Yeah, George has been, you know, a real breath of fresh air for our program. He has been here a while. We, we, because of COVID, we 
uh, had the opportunity to have him here one extra year, which I think has been important. It's allowed him to continue to play a lot more baseball. Um, he's such an even keel personality. You just never see him get too high or too low. Uh, in my opinion, he's one of the top defensive shortstops in the country and has really solidified that position for us. And, and he's a guy that's a good teammate. His teammates like him. His teammates respect him. And it's not easy. You come all the way from Australia to play American baseball here and, and, and do the things he's done. Um, I think it, it speaks a lot to his character that, that he's endured a lot of different things, including going through a pandemic and being in a, in a different country. Um, I just think he's a kid that when he leaves here, he'll, he'll have a lot of respect from the people within this program. Okay. Mark, kind of in that same vein, although he's a junior, uh, what does Brett Carey meant to you in this program, especially with his versatility to go from being a starter to closer and back again? Yeah, Brett's obviously since the day he started pitching in the regular season for us, he's been one of our best guys. And the crazy thing, you know, someday we'll tell the stories about his first fall here, which was not very good. And we had to challenge him and let him know that things needed to get a lot better. Um, and he responded uh, again. The best players, when you challenge them, they respond and, and get a lot better. And he's he's in that category. Um, he's been so important to us as a closer, as a starter, as a swing man. Um, and he's just, he wants the ball. He wants the ball in big games. He wants to be the guy. And those guys are invaluable. And again, he's a good teammate. He, he's not a guy that ever gets in trouble. He's very low maintenance. Um, just a pleasure to coach.